recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've known for a long time that this government has created a culture of fear within our health care system. But last Friday, Mr. Speaker, we learned just how bad it has become. Nurses and other frontline health care workers who raise concerns about this government's lean pet project are actually being put in timeout rooms. The fact, Mr. Speaker, that we're even having to discuss timeout rooms for health care professionals is absolutely bizarre. And it shows, Mr. Speaker, just how ridiculous this government's approach has become to its lean pet project. My question, Mr. Speaker, is for the Premier. Who came up with this idea of timeout rooms? Premier, how on earth is it acceptable to have managers in the health care system directed by this government creeping on the Facebook pages of frontline health care workers? Here, here. The uh, education uh, plan uh, released on Friday has goals that everyone can agree on, but the government hasn't named one action it will actually take to achieve any, any of those goals, and there's no timeline. This uh, government's plan uh, does have hoshins, which is apparently a Japanese term for improvement breakthroughs. But the plan has not one new dollar to actually achieve these so-called hoshins. And I don't know the um, Japanese phrase for resources desperately needed, but that would be more appropriate uh, as far as inclusion of sector plan. This government is actually planning to freeze education funding after next year's budget. To the minister, with so many needs in our schools, in our classroom, how does that make any sense and how is that fair? Yeah, yeah. Saskatchewan has the fewest occupational therapists per capita in the entire country. This shortage is hurting many people in our province, including our children. Far too many school-aged kids fall through the gap in services between health regions and school boards and are getting no services. And this government is making the situation worse. School divisions are eliminating OT positions and actually blaming Hoshin Connery and Lean. To the minister, how is this acceptable? Yeah. What Saskatchewan people can't understand is why it is that the social services minister had no problem spending $19,000 to attend a brief FASD conference in Ghana and then had a taxpayer-funded vacation with friends and family, all the while OT positions that benefit kids with FASD here at home are being cut. This is leaving many families, included, included those affected by autism spectrum disorder or fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, without desperately needed supports. To the minister, where are these families supposed to go for help? Do I oppose flying a Japanese senseis and paying them $3,500 a day? Absolutely, Mr. Here, Speaker. Here, here. Do I oppose forcing health care workers into training sessions, Mr. Speaker, where they learn how to fold paper airplanes, where they're taken away from providing care to the patients that they want to properly care for? Absolutely, Mr. Speaker. Do I oppose this government creating a culture of fear within our health care system where nurses, where frontline providers are afraid to come forward, Mr. Speaker, because of the tone being set from the top, Mr. Speaker? I absolutely oppose those measures because they're not in the best interest of Saskatchewan patients or health care. Mr. Speaker, this Premier is not focused on the basics when it comes to health care. Right. We have nurses identifying shortages in bandages and dressings that is hurting patient care. Frontline workers, Mr. Speaker, have to call patients' families, ask them if they want to pay extra in order to have the bandages, uh, bandages replaced on their, on their family members, Mr. Speaker. My question to the Premier, how on earth is this acceptable, Mr. Speaker? It took 17 hours for this government to notify the public that an inmate with a history of violence had escaped from the psychiatric hospital in North Battleford. To the Minister of Corrections, why did it take so long to notify the public. My question is for the Minister of Social Services. Does she think it's important for the Social Services Appeal Board to be fully independent and appear to be fully independent? Here. Here, here. We've had concerns raised with us about this government's approach to the Social Services Appeal Board. Clark Puckett, the former constituency assistant to the member for Arm River Watrous and a candidate for the SAS party nomination Arm River Watchers tonight served on the Social Services Appeal Board for two years while he was a constituency assistant. And we're told that the Social Services Minister appointed her own constituency assistant to the Social Services Appeal Board in December. To the Minister, how is this acceptable for constituency assistants to serve on the Social Services Appeal Board? Here, here. 
Uh, we understand when concerns are raised about the Social Services Minister appointing her own staff member to the Social Services Appeal Board, the Minister did do the right thing and remo removed her. But then she did the wrong thing. And she appointed a very close friend of hers to the board instead. She actually made this friend the co-chair of the board. The same close friend who went to Ghana and London with the minister. And the same close friend who had a $200 lunch with the minister in London. And we've heard a lot of concerns about the minister putting travel, a travel buddy of hers onto the appeal board. Because that board is supposed to be fully independent from the minister. To the minister, how can you justify this? Uh, speaker, let's be clear. What that government's looking at is a province-wide testing scheme, a standardized testing scheme that the NDP would never support. Mr. <laughs> this is incredibly frustrating for parents, for educators, for academics who simply want a straight-up answer from that minister about standardized testing. Right. Right. Instead, the government is giving the illusion of listening, but it's not actually changing a thing. It's just rebranding. The University of Regina education faculty has already passed a motion against standardized testing. And on Friday, the Department of Education Foundations at the University of Saskatchewan passed a motion or a resolution against standardized testing. They wrote to the government saying, quote, we would like you to take a firm stance and reject these plans entirely, end quote. To the minister, why won't he do that? here today, why won't he finally take a firm stance and reject these plans entirely and put some focus into where it matters on the front lines of education? Here, here, here. Taxpayers are paying for well over 300 people to take the lean leader training that we know of. For a whole year, they'll spend 35% taking lean training away from their jobs. They'll jet off for tours, Mr. Speaker, to Utah and to Seattle. And Saskatchewan taxpayers, Saskatchewan people will be on the hook, not only for the training and for the training travel costs, but they'll be on the hook for the wages for those that are spending 35% of the year doing this, and Mr. Speaker, for any costs for replacement staff. Saskatchewan people deserve to know. They deserve to know how many healthcare administrators will be receiving this training and how much will it cost. To the Premier, what's the answer? Here, here. Mr. Speaker, I've seen the Lean Leader Certificate that uh, those who complete the training receive, and it is quite impressive. I do admit right. that. It says on it, Mr. Speaker, you are now certified in the basic tools and method of the global production system and are authorized to practice Kaizen, end quote. Uh -huh. And it has John Black's name on it with the minister's name on it, Mr. Speaker, in English and thankfully also in Japanese, Mr. Speaker. My question to the Premier, what does it exactly mean to be authorized to practice Kaizen, and why why are we paying so much to have healthcare administrators among the highest paid to spend 35% of the year away from their jobs? Here, here. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I mean, some of the arguments may get, get made over there are kind of laughable, but uh, we've heard from different members on that side that every penny they've shoveled into lean on the part of this government has been money well spent. The, the $40 million with the one U.S. consultant, the, uh, the $17 million on Kaizen promotion offices, the $3,500 per day for Sansei's, Mr. Speaker, and the meter is running uh, not just in healthcare but throughout government. But uh, we hear that that's money well spent. I guess my question is to the member from Moose Jaw North. If that's money well spent, says who? The priorities of the money that this government is wasting, taxpayers' dollars, could be definitely building a long-term care facility in La Roche could deal with a lot of the issues. Now, let me tell you why. There's been a lot of good work, a lot of good work done, and by community members, by community members who may be aware of embarrass this government to put 500000 into a long-term planning. But embarrass them. They should announce and not waste the money. The planning's over. The need is now. In December, the leader of the opposition asked the Premier about the design of the Children's Hospital. He asked why this government would proceed with a plan for a children's hospital that would actually have fewer maternity beds than currently exist. And he asked why this government would ignore, would ignore the concerns of frontline health care workers who have long said the proposed design is inadequate. The Premier didn't have an answer, and the Health Minister just vigorously defended the plan.
But now we've learned this government is scrambling to fix the design of its children's hospital because it is too small. To the minister, isn't Lean at least partially to blame for the fact that this children's hospital design is too small? Yesterday this government defended the uh, Minister of Social Services' decision to appoint her very close friend to the Social Services Appeal Board. This is the same very close friend that the minister traveled to Ghana and London with on her $19,000 taxpayer-funded trip. And it's the same very close friend that the minister took out for a $200 lunch at taxpayers' expense. And when asked how the decision to appoint her very close friend was made, the minister said, and I quote, they gave me a list and I said, if all people are the same, competent, well then put Rita on the board. What? End of quote. To the minister, how many other competent people did she pass by in order to appoint her very close friend and travel partner? When asked about whether it's appropriate to appoint friends to these types of boards, the social services minister admitted yesterday that, and I quote, it's probably better if they're not a real close friend of the minister, end of quote. So to the minister, why then did she appoint her very close friend and travel partner as chair of the Social Services Appeal Board. Yesterday, this government received a scathing letter from the Saskatchewan School Boards Association. The uh, letter retracts the SSBA's initial reaction to the government's budget, which was initially a positive reaction. They did so because when they dug into the details, they became increasingly concerned with the actual impacts on students, classrooms, and local school divisions. My question is for the Premier. Does he agree with the concerns of the elected school board leaders across Saskatchewan, or, or is he going to stubbornly dismiss them? Here, here, here. Stubborn dismissal from that Premier and that government is all we're seeing once yeah. again here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, we see uh, someone here in this Assembly as Minister who won't take responsibility for his file. We see it with someone who doesn't understand right. his standardized testing yeah. agenda and the cost for students. We see it uh, here when he's unwilling to listen and work with school boards and he pretends to hold up his, uh, his plan as, uh, as, as something that uh, suggests that he's finally learned and willing to work with school boards, yet he received a letter yesterday that takes him to task right. for failing to listen with private yeah. partners in the air. That minister, to get up in this assembly and to pretend somehow that his record in education is a good one, is an embarrassment for all Saskatchewan people. The lean, the lean initiative clawback that was foisted upon school divisions will have consequences for all, all schools, all students across Saskatchewan. And my question to the Minister of Education, why didn't he have the integrity and decency to be clear with school board before the budget? Dr. Narwhal Sharma, a highly respected internal medicine specialist in Saskatoon, has this to say, quote, most physicians and nurses think the standard of acute care in Saskatoon hospitals has steadily declined in recent years. This isn't for the lack of effort by doctors, nurses, and other care providers, but because of the lack of space and resources, end quote. My question to the Premier, does he agree with Dr. Sharma, or does he stubbornly dismiss these concerns? Here, here. Right. One of the main concerns that Dr. Sharma points to is the fact that Saskatoon City Hospital is not used for the purpose for which it was built. Right. This is a concern that's shared by many people in Saskatoon and folks throughout the province, Mr. Speaker, especially, especially especially ever since this government closed City Hospital for Acute Care in 2008. Mr. Speaker, this is also this concern, this very serious concern, is highlighted by a coroner's inquest jury of just a few months ago. To the Premier, is this government listening? Listening to the recommendations from the inquest, from the people of the province, or is it dismissing these concerns about City Hospital being underutilized and health care getting worse? Here, here, here. Why won't this government listen to physicians? Why won't this government listen to reports from inquests? Why won't this government listen to the people in Saskatoon, in this province, who demand so much better? Here, here, here.